After an extended hiatus away from the Mega CD, I've recently gotten back into this nifty little add-on, and I've got to say, I am hooked all over again. Hello, my name is Charlie and I'm an addict. Hi Charlie. I mean, let's face it, there isn't that much difference between Mega Drive and Mega CD games. Here, let's take a look. One of the best examples of comparing Mega CD games to the Mega Drive would be EA Sports Soccer Championship Edition that was featured in last episode's Top 10. Now this game was almost exactly the same but with added video and Dolby surround sound. But then there's games like Eternal Champions where lots of major updates were made for the CD version. But most games are the same as their Mega Drive counterpart. Games like Echo the Dolphin and Earthworm Jim but the biggest example of a game that tried its best to be so much bigger than it claimed was... The Sega Arcade Collection 5-in-1 Limited Edition. Now, it says Limited Edition, but as far as I'm aware, it's actually the more common one. I have three copies of this game in my collection, and that's without even trying. Whenever you see the old Mega CDs being sold at second-hand shops here down under, there's always two games with it. Road Avenger and the Seeker Arcade Collection 5 and 1. You see, there is a 4 in 1 that came out with the Multi Mega Portable CD, but as you know, that console didn't sell all that well. Whereas the 5 in 1 came out with a lot of the Mega CDs, Model 1s, and 2s. Looking back now, the one thing you can say is this disc has a great set of games. <laughs> Let's kick it off with Golden Axe. Makoto Yoshita was the primary developer of Golden Axe and also responsible for the creation of Altered Beast. The Mega CD version featured new background music. Now all the game's background music can be listened to on a regular CD player and it included fresh voiceovers as well. The graphics were identical but the CD version had a slightly higher frame rate for advanced character animation. This version of the game is actually one player only even though Streets of Rage can also be found on the same CD and it retains its two-player co-op mode. Speaking of Streets of Rage... Streets of Rage is rumoured to use a tweaked version of the Golden Axe engine used on the Mega Drive. Though Streets of Rage was developed by many of the people from Team Shinobi, who are responsible for, well, of course, Revenge of Shinobi. The Mega CD version is identical to the Mega Drive original, except for the voice samples, which were re-recorded to make use of the Mega CD's capabilities. Although the sound quality was vastly improved, they are totally different recordings from the originals. Yuzo Koshiro was also responsible for the music in Revenge of Shinobi on the Mega Drive, and more recently Shenmue on the Dreamcast. But his team was quite lazy with the sound effects of Streets of Rage, as numerous sounds, such as the Extra Life sound, are lifted directly from Revenge of Shinobi. All that leads us on to Shinobi. Well, when Shinobi was first released, it really managed to wow a generation of gamers at the time. For the first time, the Mega Drive was able to offer a game that was at least on par with current PC game systems like the Mega 500, the IBM PC, or the Atari ST. Overall, this game is the best launch title on the Mega Drive, with music to this day still being one of the best game soundtracks ever. The only thing is this game was so frustrating to play. It is a really extremely difficult game to finish. Speaking of difficult, here we have the opposite of difficult. Columns. So what's there to say about this game? Well, here's something I learned from a friend of mine. You don't need it at first, but at difficult times, you can just pause the game and still see where your blocks are at. So really the pressure of the blocks falling fast is no pressure at all. And talk about pressure. Tire pressure! Before Monaco, most racing games were third-person affairs, 
the effect of being inside the cockpit helped increase their sense of realism and speed. The career mode was also neat, and for the time pretty original, and extended the lifespan of the game considerably. It's a must-have racer for the Mega Drive that was never really quite bettered by anything else that I can think of on that console. Good work, Sega! Now, as much as the cover says it's an arcade collection, these really are just ports of the Mega Drive games, and the games never really pretend to be anything but. With, I think, only two of the games even slightly enhanced for CD. But hey, it's overall great to have these games all on one disc, and if there's no cart in Mega Drive, and you turn on the console, it's a nice surprise to have this game load, as there's always something worth playing. And you compare it to the likes of Sonic Ultimate's Mega Drive collection, it really is small and limited, but the games they chose to put on the collection were fine choices, and it makes an excellent addition to any gamer's Mega CD library. But the funny thing is, they almost managed to fit a similar collection all on one cartridge, which just goes to show they could have done a lot more with the medium had they wanted to. In fact, here in the US you can get some of the cartridge called the Genesis 6 pack, which has Shinobi, Columns, Golden Axe, Super Hang On, Streets of Rage, and Sonic the Hedgehog. Now it's obvious that by the time the 6 pack came out, Sega had come up with some great tricks with compressing data. But I think it still would have been great to see something closer to the Mega Drive collection that came out on the PS2, as expecting something like Sonic's Ultimate Mega Drive collection would have been asking way too much back then, especially as the games weren't even that old. So that's all there really is to say about this disc. It definitely is a game I think deserves to be found with every Mega CD out there, and will always be the first disc I think of when I'm having a discussion about the Mega CD. I hope you enjoyed. Now on with the plug. Charlie does a